Good evening. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. China, all eyes on the Shanghai Composite. These are the markets on the mainland in China. They've been plunging these markets these last days, and the Chinese government has put its reputation for all of us to watch. Now, the Chinese government is trying to defy gravity. Markets go up and down. A sharp rise, a bull market, is followed by a correction. It can be followed by a bear market, which is defined in normal capitalist parlance as 20%. This market is down much more than that. However, it was already up 70% since it started its rise last summer. There's the problem. Can you stop gravity? Can you keep the market from returning where it came from? The capitalists, the stock market, the rules, the books say no. But it is the Chinese Communist Party, and I'm joined now by Gordon Chang, Forbes.com contributor, who is in Hong Kong. Gordon, trees grow to heaven, and the Communist Party can defy gravity. Is this an opinion that is well known around the world, and are we watching an experiment never held before? The market is being defied by the communists. The market is shy of the communists. But Gordon, right now, I'm watching the composite open. Two to three percent lower. Apparently, it hasn't gotten the、uh, the message from the Xi Jinping and Beijing. Good morning to you, Gordon. Well, good evening, John. And those propositions that you started with once were accepted almost everywhere around the world. But in the last three weeks, people have started to question that. And Chinese technocrats, who once were held in awe, now are indeed thought to be mortal because clearly they're not doing the right things. All three markets, by the way, are down. Not just Shanghai, but also the Shenzhen Composite is down, as well as the Chinex, which is the Nasdaq-like board. They're all down this morning. We welcome our colleague Andrew Collier. He's the managing director of Orient Capital Research. He is in Hong Kong, and he's just come back from Vietnam. And I hope to to flag his Vietnam trip. But I'd like a comment from Andrew. Watching this phenomenon of the plunge of the market, that has happened before. Yes, it's called a crash, but it's also a great buying opportunity. People understand. The time to buy is blood in the streets. There are lots of proverbs here. The way to get rich is to sell too early. All of that. But now we're watching the Chinese Communist Party forbid the market to go down. Andrew, my measure of the reporting here is that half the stocks are forbidden from trading. That right now people who are big shareholders have been forbidden from selling. Short selling is banned. The market continues to decline. The market has been flooded with cash, with credit. The banks have opened. Open their drawers. The Communist Party is said to be buying stocks. What have they got left in their arsenal? Good morning to you, Andrew.、Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, yes. Well, it's rather absurd what they're trying to do, and even more than you suggested, the central bank is now putting all of its money be- behind the、uh, an individual agency that does margin financing for stocks, which is absurd. It's as if the Fed came down to you know the Nasdaq and started opening its chest. Um, but、uh, the real question is why they decided to do this, and we're all scratching our heads、uh, in perplexity of why the government, you know, felt it could stop the the route in the market, and why they would want to bother because the market is actually not that important in China. Gordon. Andrew, you know we all know the Chinese market is is、uh, dropping. The question that people are starting to ask is, will this market drop affect the broader economy? How do you feel about that? I don't think there is going to be much of an impact. The, the one weak link is the bank exposure to all of these、uh, fast traders out there、uh, shoveling money out、um, into in the hands of margin traders. But th- we're only talking about three or four hundred billion, which, given that the assets of the banking system is about twenty trillion, is really not going to be a big issue. So my feeling is, it's it, the big impact is really it makes the the party and the leadership look quite、uh, inept. I want to speak to the larger economy because Gordon and I, and you reported the last time, have watched an economy that's in denial, or a government's in denial about the sluggishness in the economy. In this part of the world, we call what we're witnessing in China a recession. Why won't they agree to that, Andrew? That would be a healthy turn. Deep recessions are followed by fast recoveries. It's a good thing to look forward to. 
Well, their, their concern is always control. They don't want unrest. And if you have a deep recession and you've got a bunch of Wuhan steel workers out uh, protesting in the streets, that could question the legitimacy of the whole system. So that's their major concern. They are aware that there's a downturn, and the, the People's Bank of China has some very smart people looking at these issues. And they've come up with some proposals. The problem is, in the end of the day, uh, it's they have to get them through the rest of the country. It's a bit like uh, Washington telling the state of Texas, "Look, we think your tax rates are too low," and the state of state of Texas says, "You know, I'm just not going to go with that." Gordon, Andrew, you mentioned the People's Bank of China, which is the central bank. Uh, yesterday, um, the head of the central bank, Zhou Chaochuan, left China for Russia. Uh, there was going to be a BRICS meeting and a Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting, and he left with other technocrats and President Xi Jinping. Um, apparently, the PBOC doesn't think that this is serious. Is that right? Um, the PBOC probably is not even guiding this. Um, I have the most respect for the PBOC out of, out of the whole group there. And, and, but my uh, understanding is that on Sunday there was a big meeting with Premier Li Keqiang and uh, the brokers, and they are the ones who really cooked up this plan. I think that my guess is the PBOC was a bit of an innocent bystander in a lot of this. Andrew, I want to mention your trip to Vietnam because the Obama administration is looking to bring under the American wing to make peace with Vietnam. Is this in Vietnam celebrated as a turn in the road or do they see this as a geopolitical expedience move because of the conflict with China and the South China Sea? Oh, there are some strategic reasons for Vietnam's uh, friendliness towards us, but there's been a quite a, t a decade-long uh, over overture by the Vietnamese towards the global economy, and it's quite exciting, actually. I'm about to participate in a Mansfield Foundation Rule of Law conference there, and I was in Vietnam several times on business, and I was very impressed with the dynamism of the local people. Um, the only problem is the government still has their, you know, political cronies and their corruption and that kind of stuff. But overall, it's got a very bright future in the next five or ten years. So Vietnam, with its Communist Party, is a mini-me of China. The economies would be healthy, the people are ready to learn and, and grow and prosper, but the Communist Party in, Be in Beijing and the Communist Party in Hanoi continue to take their piece of the action and limit growth. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. But I, as a longtime China guy, when I was in Vietnam the last few trips, I was impressed at how little interference there is. Sure, if you do a, a big factory, you're going to have to pay people some off. Uh, a friend of mine imports handbags, and he has to pay people off at the, uh, at the customs. But overall, there's a lot of activity that the government is just not controlling because they, they're not big enough or, um, uh, you know, communist enough to do it. Gordon? Andrew, um Vietnam is, is part of the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. This is this free trade area that's proposed for 12 countries, including the United States. I've seen reports or analyses that says that of all those 12 countries participating in these negotiations, which could wrap up uh, this month in Hawaii, it appears that Vietnam by far would be the biggest winner. What, what do you think about this? I think that's absolutely true. I think everybody has agreed that Vietnam is the next China, basically. It's, it's going, to, going to be the factory of the world, and, and it's going to replace China in, in certain areas, uh, low-income low goods. So everybody's very excited about that, and, and it's also one of the largest co uh, countries in Southeast Asia and with the uh, biggest uh, group of young workers. So I think the TPP is going to be a big deal for Vietnam. About the Chinese markets, you, you correctly analyze this as not integral to the success of China. Do you, is there a guess, is there a gossipy guess in Hong Kong as to why Xi Jinping's administration, certainly the premier of China, have gotten themselves tangled up in what otherwise is just trees don't grow to heaven and you shrug and walk away? Do they not know this, Andrew? You know, I've been impressed with a lot of the things the Chinese have done over the last decade in trying to deal with their excessive debt and a lot of other inefficient uh, things in their economy. But this has stumped me. Uh, why they thought they could control the market with the, the amount of money they're putting in compared to the size of the market is beyond me. And the only thing I can think of is that they've gotten arrogant. And they think that if there's money, uh, they can almost solve the problem with just more cash. And, and I'm assuming that's what happened. 
Andrew Collier is in Hong Kong. He's Managing Director of Orient Capital Research. Gordon Chang, a Forbes.com contributor, is in Hong Kong. I mentioned that since we've been speaking, the market, the Shanghai Composite, that's what I'm looking at on my Wall Street Journal site, has gone from down 3% to down 1%, but those are normal market behavior in a sell-off, in a bear market. You start low, you come up, you rally, you, you sell off, and this particular market is so mangled by the mandates, including people having their property confiscated. That's right. If you are a big shareholder in stocks that are still trading, because half of them are not, you're forbidden to sell. That's confiscation. That's not capitalism. I'm John Batchelor.